viewers. My phone is broken, so I'm using my old phone, which is not really mine anymore. So the, everything might look a little bit different, a little bit more zoomed out, which was a perspective I was so used to, and now I'm not used to it anymore. And suddenly you have a whole lot more white up there. But you know, as long as I don't have a new phone, this will, is, will be how it is. Boy, uh, it seems like every week, or every time I talk about the Prem Premier League, I'm making kind of a video, a thumbnail about Arsenal, and it is a little bit uh, kind of boring, but it's all about them. It is literally all about them. They have been passing every test thrown at them. This, I said it, these upcoming, in the last uh, big week, in the, uh, these upcoming weeks, will be a huge test because we will see City have to play rather tough op opposition and Arsenal also have to play tough op opposition. Arsenal didn't flinch, City did. Manchester United actually uh, managed to beat City and uh, made a tiny video about a particular call in there that we will not lose a lot of time here. They managed to beat City and Arsenal beat United. So uh, even now with a game in hand, Arsenal can even afford to lose twice if they win everything else. And this is what they have been doing. They have been winning everything else at the moment. Uh, if they continue that run, it is really, really hard to see them not winning the league at this moment. And also having, uh, I think, 50 points at the halfway mark. Bravo. Honestly, even if they don't win the league, whatever, whatever Arteta has done this season deserves a huge and enormous amount of praise. He has built an absolute juggernaut. And it's actually a fun juggernaut as well. I actually uh, enjoy watching Arsenal. Um, again, City had an, uh, had their ups and downs. Of course, Holland was always made the problem until he scored again a hat-trick and came back. I uh, also really liked how Guardiola um, kind of scolded everyone uh, after beating, coming back to beat Spurs. Spurs, another team, very much up and down. Then we have the mid-table Giants in uh, Chelsea and Liverpool, where at the moment it seems like Chelsea is maybe getting something together. Um, their draw at Liverpool... I think they were the better team, but of course it was all, all we also have, have, have talked about the horrible debut that Joao Felix is. But they're buying everything under the sun, including Mudrik, who was set to go to Arsenal. Um, and, you know, with an injury list that is getting shorter and shorter, maybe there is something happening. Uh, just Gal Gagasi with Liverpool. I really feel, especially the way they look, look at Brighton, uh, it was absolutely turgid. At least in the FA Cup, they didn't look all that bad. But I think the other really, really big, big stories coming also from Liverpool is, of course, Everton, which are an absolute mess. And we will see in my, my predictions, Everton at this moment, to me, this is almost unfathomable. Everton are slated to go down and not only go down, but go down in last place. Uh, the ownership definitely is not endearing themselves to the fans with all the troubles they have been causing by making seemingly false statements, you know, uh, where there are they not, not, not allowed, were there attacks against Casino Ship, ship or not. Uh, they just cannot get anything right. The only thing I can say for now is that Frank Lampard was sacked, but from what I could tell, Frank Lampard was the least of Everton's problems, uh, but maybe they need a manager that can get them out of there. Although when I look, look at the list of candidates, they might be all good coaches. But I have the feeling you need something for the nitty gritty right now and not something for the fancy that you build for the in the future. I'm a foot football club, although I would fancy myself doing so in any case. Let's get into it. I actually want to start in the Premier League with a, a makeup game from the national morning round where Fulham against Chelsea was the first one. Uh, which Fulham duly won um, with uh, Willian giving uh, them the lead. Koulibaly could equalize, but Fulham largely outplayed uh, Chelsea. It was, of course, also the day before Joao Felix, who could see he's getting more and more uh, agitated and then he's getting sad, sent off and with a man less. Carlos Vinicius gives Fulham the deserved winner there. And at that point, uh, Graham Potter was in serious, serious, serious trouble. But it all got a little bit better on the uh, upcoming coming weekend. And yes, I'll talk about FA Cup and whatever towards the uh, very end. 
the big one, or there were two big ones in the round that won the past weekend. The first one was got the Manchester Derby. I made, a, as I said, already a little video about the offside call or the lack of an offside call on the Bruno Fernandes goal. Uh, actually, I think on the balance, if I think about it, United actually probably did deserve that. I mean, they were a little bit bad in the sec in, in, in the first and sec, second half. Yes, City kind of turned, uh, turned, turned, turned it up a little bit, had control, but never really threatening. That also got, got to be said. Still, I felt the two United goals came a little bit out, out of nowhere. And yes, the Fernandes uh, goal is one. I It feels so offside, and I think I really like it. Uh, the description of it, the most active passive offside that you will ever see. So yeah, uh, and then... You have to look also at City because you get this equalizer and you cannot give up the goal, especially against Rashford, who is scoring left and right at, at the moment. He is truly, truly, truly unleashed. Right after, probably the stun of the, the weekend uh, was how Brighton completely dismantled Liverpool. And that it was nil-nil at the half was flattering to the nth degree for, for, for them. You really thought, yeah, Liverpool... Yeah, this was really, really bad, but let's get out of it. We have uh, managed to keep it level, and now we attack and say, no, Sol Soli March destroyed Liverpool uh, early in the second half, and then uh, well, well big with another goal. It could have been, I mean, 3 0 is ugly, it could have been even ugly. And Brighton is an informed team, and again, this Zerbi uh, is probably even an upgrade on Graham Potter in a way there. A uh, really, really bad loss for Everton, 2-1 at home to Southampton, a uh, fellow relegation struggler. And that is the re one of the results where you really have the feeling, yeah, it's not looking good for Everton at all. They need a minor miracle. Forest beating the last, there was a minor mir miracle. West Ham also in trouble. Wolves a little bit on an upward trend. And as I said, uh, Chelsea finally got three points. Harvard's goal against Crystal Palace. The Palace side that is really, really tough to play against Newcastle also a win and then Spurs against Arsenal the first half it was all Arsenal yes the first goal was all on Yoris uh, he should never have given up that goal but there was a great shot by Partey that hit the, uh, the upright uh, Odegaard makes it from a simple position uh, it make, make, makes it 2-0 and it was as merrily a destruction of Spurs as you could wish for in, in the North London Derby if you're an Arsenal fan. Second half, though, Spurs came back into, into the game, had a few chances, but, you know, it never was in doubt. Arsenal were fully in control, and that was a major, major, major win for Arsenal uh, right there, because this was kind of, everyone said, not on Derby, you might throw up. No, they did not throw up. They actually showed everything they have, and, yeah, at that moment, I really had the feeling Arsenal... Will be hard to top top them for Champions League. Uh, it's no question they will be sure in there. Midweek round, uh, United up on the high from the Dar the Darwin uh, throw away a uh, game at Crystal Palace. It gotta be said. I mean Bruno Fernandes give them a lead, they control the game, uh, but then kind of forget about scoring the second one or not even attempting. So let's just play it home, and then we prepare for Arsenal. Uh, you lose Casemiro, which is a big, big uh, dent for, for them because Casemiro is one of those players that really put United, after he got used it, on a different level in midfield. It's not something that they can um, replace easily. But then Olise scores a wonderful free kick to make it 1-1. I mean, it's a free result, but if you, 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 know, you need to take care of those points uh, sooner. Uh, or you can go to your City rivals that you have just uh, beaten, who also a little bit freakishly find themselves 2-0 down at the halftime to a Spurs team that always plays, or always seems to get a result against City. Uh, I'm not sure how justified the boos at halftime were, um, but... Fact is, they were 2-0 down at, 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 at the half. And both goals, uh, Ederson did not look well. Uh, and especially the first one is a little bit, this was hyper Guardiola. I mean, this is just automatic. You play out, play out, play out. And yeah, then you get inter intercepted. You cannot just, just do it like an automatism. Uh, and yeah, if Emerson Royale scores, there's something really, really wrong. 
I was actually a little bit. I I I don't miss one one more buzzing, but I definitely like Spurs a whole lot more than I like City, and I'm fully aware I'm saying this while I'm wearing an Arsenal shirt. As soon as Julian Alvarez pulls one back, I said, "Oh, Spurs are in for a real world of pain." And then Riyad Mahrez just kicked kick in another gear. Uh, the way he assisted and the way the Haaland goal to equalize just two minutes after Alvarez uh, got the goal back was already pretty brilliant and Mare scores two more to give uh, City an overall fully deserved uh, win. Yes, there was a chance in there where Spurs could have equalized at one point. Um, but that was the only, only thing. It was then really as soon as City got those three goals, it was only going to go one way which leads us now to the past weekend um liverpool chelsea yes if Havertz's goal uh, would have counted and still not quite sure i mean i know the rules and maybe yeah but it, it still looked odd to me that this didn't count honestly uh but okay we gotta accept as it is um if that goal would have been scored, I think it might have been a, bad, a, a better game. I felt that Chelsea overall was a more mature team. And that's, it was Liverpool coming back from a relatively good midweek performance in the FA Cup, which we'll talk about at Wolves. Um, but it seemed also tentative and, you know, not well thought out. Chelsea definitely had had, had, had a plan for the first 20, 20 minutes. They, to me, seemed a more active team. Then Liverpool took a bit over. And then you really thought that at the beginning of the second half, now Liverpool is going to kick into the next gear. But uh, the changes came, and especially when Mudrik came, came on, he actually, not, uh, I was to say the uh, 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 debut of all debuts, but he truly showed that there was some danger uh, there. And yeah, nil-nil. I think it is one game. If any of these would, would have lost, uh, it, would have, it would have been a crisis. So kind of crisis averted here. But overall, it was not the greatest of games. And this was kind of my, uh, what I got the feeling from Premier League. Because whatever I ever watched, it ended nil-nil. Uh, especially on Saturday. Yes, I didn't watch the other games much. Because I was then a little bit more captured by the Bombos League. Uh, that went all riot. Uh, as I said, West Ham, who were themselves in trouble get two boring goals to beat Everton 2-0 and Everton is in a real real world of pain this was the last time that Frank Lampard was their coach uh, I'm seriously wondering if a Premier League team will go for him uh, at this moment again uh, I think he probably has to swallow his pride a little bit and go a step down maybe show some work again because you know Chelsea yeah worked well at first but as soon as he got the start it didn't work on Everton was always a bad place to be in a uh, little bit of breathing room though for West Ham who a team that also I think they have outgrown their coach that would, would, would be, be the team that probably would need uh, a little bit of a new spark. But, you know, it's always dangerous to do these things when you had a successful coach. How tall, how hard to follow up. But not everyone can pull a Brighton uh, and pull a Deserby out of the bag. Newcastle, uh, defensively solid. That's all I need to say here. Uh, the game itself was not the great, greatest one. But Newcastle have only lost one game all season and are barely conceding goals. And that usually bodes well. They're not losing. They're... Picking up points, 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 points. On the route to a Champions League spot? Potentially. Um, City against Wolves. Yes, everyone's saying, I said it already, uh, Holland is probably, he's got another hat-trick. It is so ridiculous what this guy is doing to the Premier League. Uh, I mean, all the goal-scoring records are just smashed. And at a pace where it's really, really, really hard to see that those are going to get broken some anytime soon. Yes, records in the end will be broken, but this was, this was just ridiculous. And it shows what I like about Holland uh, is that not only is he a great goal, goal scorer, but he's also very much a team player. He celebrates his teammates' goals as much as he, he celebrates his own. And that is a different level of superstar because you know uh, the Cristianos, Mbappes, and, and so it's all about them, 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 them. I want the ball. I, I, I don't have to ha I have, have the feeling with Holland. He seems to be extremely level headed and puts the team ahead of himself. And that is a great quality to have. How about the game of the weekend? Potentially the game of the year so far, at least in England. 
maybe even season Arsenal against United. What a game that was. Thoroughly entertaining. And yes, the scoreline kind of uh, is a bit of lying of how the, the game was actually going. Because on the face of it, Arsenal completely outplayed United. However, United showed that they're a really good counter-attacking side. Yes, they were missing Casemiro, which I think is a huge factor in this. I don't want to overplay Casemiro, but I really think that United are a different team when Casemiro is in. They get the early goal. Yes, in the Bill Biller play, they lose, they lose the ball. Uh, and Fernandes plays it to Rashford, who takes a far out shot. And is always from shots that, that, that far out, you want a goal, goalkeeper. But I think it was a really good shot. And again, Rashford uh, is scoring, 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 scoring. It's almost a sure bet at this moment. Don't bet. Just, just because Carlos said that. But then you saw Arsenal reacting with a brilliantly, beautifully played goal. Probably the favorite of my of the afternoon for me when Nketiah had in a shock across. Uh, but the build-up before that was just wonderfully played. And at that moment, I thought, yeah, Arsenal's come back, but uh, United held tight right right there. They find the breakthrough through Saka. Another long-range shot was also very nice. But again, long-range shots, goalkeeper. Who knows? Uh, only to be packed back almost immediately by Lisandro Martinez's Ike equalizer where Ram Ramsdell again another goalkeeping mistake. <laughs> I don't want to make this all, all of goalkeeping mistakes only, but Lisandro Martinez had had it in the weirdest fashion. But I think he hit, he had to give it a looping header, kind of, kind of to go uh, to go it over Gabriel. Two two at a, at a point where Arsenal really were, do, were dominating the proceedings, and I was really thinking this is now one of one of those. If Arsenal win, this is a true test of character. If United get the draw out of, of, of this, they get more than they bargained for, and will be really really pleased, and this will give them a, a boost. Arsenal had the chances. There were quite a few in there. I think there was a, a, a especially big one by Saka. In the end, Nketiah gets his foot on a cross in and gets a 90th minute winner. What also impresses me is that Arteta made only three changes. Uh, bring on Tommy Yasso at the halftime, then a uh, newly signed uh, Trossard from Brighton and Rob Holt holding then can kind of for Oedegaard in the end to really keep it together. I know that United, especially Ten Hag, was fuming F at first because uh, they twice in a row with very late goals threw away vital points. But while at Crystal Palace I could understand the IR here at Arsenal, they would have been really, really lucky because United were then just defensively and just holding back and that maybe you didn't really deserve the win in that sense, although deserved in soccer is always a uh, relative term. And then yesterday there's really not much I can tell about Fulham against Spurs. Except the Fulham maybe was a bit better in the, in the first half. Uh, Kane scores a brilliant goal. Uh, <laughs> how Son got that assist, he doesn't even know. And then the hell held on and get a much needed win. And also an exchange in the scarves on the background. But you don't see this because uh, it's over there. Um, so yeah. Arsenal, point uh, gameless at 50 points at the half a point of the season. Uh, yes, they still have to play City twice, but it's rather, rather impressive. And they are now the slight favorites in this title race. Both Arsenal and City will be in the Champions League. And Newcastle might actually also, also win it, but there's United. And you see there's still Liverpool with a, you know, a game in hand and a good rating that could go as get in there. I just, it's harder and harder to see where at the same time Chelsea with a game more and maybe a little bit more than an uptick uh, have a much steeper uh, climb ahead. But I still can't have that because even though know, 32 points, let's say Liverpool win this makeup game, it's 32 points. Uh, then they're just behind Spurs, yeah, maybe, and if they get a run together as they did uh, two, um, two seasons ago, it could happen. But it is, honestly, for me, it feels like uh, it's very unlikely like that. But, you know, it's still a little bit less than half of the season to, to be played. So there are many, many, many games, of course, Chelsea and Liverpool, uh, you know, and they're just saying Liverpool are a little bit higher are the negative surprises of the top pop top teams but you know it's West Ham Leicester uh, that are definitely underperforming and you know the less I can say about Everton probably probably the better I don't need to head it home Everton are last in the expected standings
last. They have always been quite some movement in mid-table, uh, especially Aston Villa and West Ham getting up, up again up top. It's Arsenal, the two Manchester teams, and still Liverpool in, in there, which is surprising. Me. But, you know, if you look at the ratings bars, you can see Liverpool is rather, rather strong there, so they expected to get many points. But that might change as well, because their rating has been dropping as of late. Uh, in two weeks, we have uh, the next Premier League round. <laughs> Everton have to play Ars Ar 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 Arsenal. Seems to be a foregone conclusion. We have another Chelsea Fulham game. We have another Spurs against City CC game. So there are many, many, many games that are doubt about. We have another Wolves against Liverpool, which uh, they're also playing a whole lot against each other. But we also have a cup weekend uh, uh, coming, and so it's time to uh, uh, recap a few of the FA Cup. Uh, replay results. Uh, the first one was not a uh, replay between Forest Green and Birmingham, where Birmingham won. Uh, the one that's of course big is Liverpool 1 0 over Wolves uh, with actually a pretty decent performance. Yes, it was most, most defensive, but it was a very nice goal. Also, Leeds completely steamrolling Car, Car City moving on to the next round where they play. The winner of Accrington against Borum Wood, which is happening tonight, um, which we'll see. But once this is done, this weekend, we have the FA Cup uh, round four. Here, a few selected games of all the Prem, Prem, Prem League teams. And of course, we have City against Arsenal. Now. now, usually I will say that's a barnstormer. However, I have a, I have a gut, gut feeling that in this game, they're not playing the strongest team. So I'm not sure if I, how, how I can say, please watch this. It will definitely be interesting. We also have Brighton against Liverpool a replay. Those are kind of the standout fixtures in there. But there are a few others interesting uh, as well. And before that, we also have the League Cup semifinals uh, happening. Uh, with Southampton against Newcastle happening tonight. And then Nottingham Forest against United. As I said, it looks very much like a United, a United final between Manchester and Newcastle. Lots of things happening in the Premier League. So it was a long video. Please let me know in the comments, comments below what you thought about the games this week. Um, give me a sign that you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.